tiny vlog. I don't know what that means. Are we live? I think so. Good afternoon and welcome to a great weapon that's a live stream. I'm Becky. This is not Constantine, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, Constantine got a little bit tied up, and so Fatini is my beautiful assistant today. Okay. Um, I wish we could do the whole stream like this, <laughs> but anyway, Constantine might turn up hopefully at some point. He's probably watching <laughs> wherever he is. <laughs> <On his way. laughs> Um, today we're going to be talking about macro lenses, the reason being that a few weeks ago, if you recall, when we did our giveaway, we wanted you to suggest ideas of what we were going to do next week or the week after. And a lot of you asked for a macro stream, so we thought we'd do macro past, present and future to kind of cover all the bases. Can you ask him to bring up the Z extension tubes? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Just to demonstrate them, uh, because I forgot them. Anyway, everyone say hello to you. Hi. <laughs> um, so uh, before I begin, we have a couple of things. Super Chat is our coffee fund. A few people got a bit confused in, over the last few weeks of how to contribute to the coffee fund. If you would like to contribute, you can do so by clicking the little dollar sign in the chat. You won't see it if you're not signed in. So if you're signed into YouTube, you can contribute that way. If you're not signed in, then you, you won't see it. So anyway, just the dollar sign that's there for you. We would love you to contribute to the Coffee Fund and thank you for everyone who's done so, so through PayPal and, and through our website separately. Also, we have a giveaway. Oh, that's okay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. <laughs> you're forgiven. So. Now, hopefully no one from Nikon is watching this <laughs> because this is something very special. You might think, why is this special, Becky? Okay, maybe I shouldn't explain why it's special. This is a camera wrap. Now, I actually have one of these. This is a limited edition camera wrap. Um, I'm not going to take it out and show it, but you can fit, I mean, you can actually fit up to like a D6 with the lens on it in there. I wrap my Z6 usually when I'm traveling or my F6 in this camera wrap. Uh, the reason why it's very special and limited edition, you won't be able to find one anywhere, is because there's a camera that wasn't released that is on this. If you can guess what it is, the picture is there. But anyway, so there was a camera that never saw the light of day on there. Um, so if you would like to win, just pop in, I would like to win. Is that enough? I think yeah, I would like to win. Yeah, you can ask for Yeah, we'll keep it simple and then we'll, no we'll do the Wheel of Fortune at the end. Um, I'm going to pop it there. Thank you very much to Adrian and Vince and Carl and Jeremy for your contributions to the Coffee wow. Fund. And Ian and Terry, everyone found the button this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, good. So actually it's there, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's over there. Anyway, very well done. I have my coffee in hand already. Um, so, macro lenses. I wanted to start with a very special lens um, and hopefully my screen grabby doodad thingy, technical term. Yes, it works. Okay, good. So this is the first micro nickel. This was a five centimeter collapsible F 3.5 and it was five centimeter, not 5.5 centimeter. This was actually made, as you can probably see, for um, the rangefinder cameras. A small percentage of them were made for the Leica M screw mount, and then the rest were made for uh, the Nikon uh, rangefinder mount, obviously. Now, there's quite a few special things about this lens, uh, which I have to read, so I'm going to have to take the screen grab off in a second. But just admire that for a minute. This is a Tony Hurst picture, of course, the legendary Tony Hurst. And this is actually an image which is on page four of the um, Nikon 100th anniversary legendary photography of Tony Hurst book. Oh wow. It's quite a mouthful. And we, we could have them stuck. No, we've run, we've actually I think we've completely sold out of those now. Um so anyway, that's the lens I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to tell you the reason why this is so special and there's a number of reasons why. Uh Nikon put an entire article on their website about the the 5 cm macro or the 55 mil what it became. Um it was introduced in May 1956. It has an aperture range of f3.5 to f22. Um, it was actually 1 to 12. No, see, I've got two different bits of information here. Someone says it 1 to 20 reproduction, and somebody else said 1 to 6. Maybe that's with its collapse. In fact, that is its collapse. <laughs> so, <laughs> just nod and smile. <laughs> that's all I need. Uh, so, um, so it, because it was a collapsible lens, it had two different reproduction ratios. 
Um, and we actually have one in stock, believe it or not. So obviously in the Nikon rangefinder mount, I don't know how much it is. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do that amount of research. Um, they only made it less than 1500. I think it was 1188. 900 of those were the bayonet mount and 287 of those were the Leica M mount. So uh, there you go. Now, obviously the development changed throughout the years afterwards and we ended up with rather than a five centimeter when we went to Nikon F we ended up with a 55 millimeter or 5.5 centimeter um I am going to just is that the man himself the man the legend he's here well Kotick Timmy says apologies yes. for being late Constantine is looking well this afternoon <laughs> Constantine looks stunning this afternoon. Gorgeous. My new makeup. <laughs> you need a moment or should no, I? No, you ready? Okay. Did you uh, bring the thing that I asked? What did I ask him to bring? No. The, the Z extension tubes. I didn't oh, you didn't yeah. see that? Okay, fine. Do you want me to run? Yes. Run! PKs? No, the Z ones. They're in a white box next to my desk, in the cabinet yeah. next to my desk. Thank you. <laughs> Just going to get him to run a little bit more before the live stream. Uh, <laughs> I like that last comment. Can I read it? Becky is the best. She deserves a raise. She does a brilliant job. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> yes. I appreciate that. Um, nobody knows what they'd like to win. It's very special. Just know that it's a very special thing. <laughs> Um, I don't want to talk about the shine plug principle and an in-camera single exposure alternative to photo stacking, photo stacking in post. I don't want to, but you can. Please feel free to uh, discuss that amongst yourselves. That's <laughs> I think Constantine won't come to the live stream if we start talking about that. Um, can I add thank you to Gary for your contribution to the coffee fund? So that was the, the reason that I wanted to kind of point out that first lens was because Nikon took the concept of five centimeter uh, 3.5, they took that idea and then basically ran with it. I can't find them, so I'll tell Okay, you. fine, I'll just talk about them. Is yes, it fine? exactly. Um, well, and then you can like fill in the gaps while I'm trying to find a picture okay. of them online. Next to my desk, there are a million things. <laughs> Next to my desk, there are a million yes. things. Yes, it's true. Um, <laughs> okay, so just... So let's do this one, two, one, two. Can you hear me? It's going to be 30 seconds before they okay. can hear that. So the... I can't hear you back. So the, um, we, we were talking about the five centimeter of 3.5. Okay, did which you tell is, them the story, the funny story, how it was made? No, I didn't, because I wanted you to do that bit. <laughs> is that all right? With my iPad. <laughs> Can you tell the story? After uh, the Pacific War. Oh, yeah. So Pacific War is basically, during the Second World War, whatever happened in Asia, it's called Pacific War. Okay, right? that's what they call it. So after that, some macro lenses materialized. So American Library, mm -hmm. Congress Library, used to use their own system. Okay. Which was really good for English characters. Hi everyone, by the way. Um, but it wasn't good for kanji characters, so for Japanese characters. Okay. So they looked at the German version, which is supposed to be superior, mm -hmm. but it also didn't work so well. So that's how the original 5cm 3.5 was created. Oh. Ah, okay, good. So that was that. And then they released the next type, mm -hmm. five centimeter three point five, a couple of years later. And then in uh then we had pre I version, the F mount version, nineteen sixty one. That's right, of which there were five versions following yes. that. So pre AI there were five versions. This is the fifty five millimeter F three point five. The very first one was a five point five centimeter. Um that natively was a one to two reproduction lens. Now, very quickly, just to talk about what reproduction ratio means. So it's this. So when we talk about one to one reproduction, the subject is projected life size onto the sensor or onto the film. So 55 millimeter F3.5 lenses mm -hmm. were one to two reproduction, which meant they were half life size, essentially. And in order to get yourself to one to one reproduction, you had to add an extension tube, a PK3, mm. as it was called then. Um, Paul, just to explain, the um, the 330 premiere is actually a video. So we're going to do back-to-back -back scheduling, Grey's Westminster, all afternoon on Friday. You don't know about this because you weren't here. No, what happened? <laughs> so the um, 
I'll, I'll give you a preview at the end. I'll give you a little sneak okay. preview at the end of our live stream, and then we'll do the premiere. It's happening right after the stream. Okay. One of our videos has been scheduled. It's not your video. It's no. my video. Oh, right. It's okay. the one that took, like, took a year to make, which is about three minutes long. Oh, wiggy. Sorry, I just was running for 10 minutes straight, <laughs> and I'm completely spaced out now. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. And since I have, I don't know anything about micro lenses, I don't know what I'm doing here to start with. But, Excellent. you know. <laughs> Excellent. She knows everything. I do. So I will be talking. Yes. Um, so, yes, a couple of people are asking about sound. So... Work your volume up. We're fixing it as we yes, speak. So okay. it con suddenly sounds very, very loud. Okay, yeah, normally we would test all this, but since I have kids now. <laughs> a puppy. Yes, and I was waiting <laughs> for 20 minutes for her to, to do, to do her one. business. <laughs> yes, and she didn't do it. No. So we ran back. And then the moment she walks in, she did it on a nappy. Oh, okay. Lovely. The, whole, the yes. audience really want to hear about it. There is it. no grass outside. I know. In Timlico. So she finds it, like, confusing. Exactly. Shame. Dog, dog lovers, you'll understand. Um, yeah, so we are on two different channels, I think, because that's set up. No, one. Oh, you put now it on one. one. Okay. Because okay. we have a different setup for the podcast so that our audio can be edited. It's all very technical. Um, and Eve says it's handled, so that's great. Okay. Con... Needs a coffee. His coffee is somewhere. Yes. Fatini? And water. His and coffee. Everything. His coffee is downstairs on his desk. Oh. Yes, yes. I'm, you know, okay. I just run in and I just run straight up. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we are so prepared today. Right, well, I'm prepared. So, yes. now that we've talked about the first Nikon lens, yes. we're going to move forward a little bit. Yes, so they, for pre eye versions, you know, mm -hmm. that they have Alter, which mm -hmm. had a half of rep reproduction. Mm -hmm. And then the actual original one that came out in 1961 had one to one. One to one reproduction. Yeah. So that was the. Oh, yes, we never see that one. Yeah, so we've never seen this one, but the all to one, you could control the aperture if yes. you would put it on something like F2A, yes, I think. Right. Okay. So, in fact, I can probably, if you give me a, a hot second, <laughs> I can okay. actually find a picture of it for you. So. Okay. Um, then I can share it with the audience. So, this is the 5.5, 3.5, this one that has one to one reproduction. Yes. Okay. So, let's just share. This one! Never see this one, actually. I've, I don't think I've ever seen this one in the flesh. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the one that had one-to-one -one reproduction. Now, the one that we tend to see more of, if I go back a step, you'll be very familiar with these pages. I use them often. We start to see them designed like this. Mm -hmm. And that, that, oh, that's got the aperture control unit with it. Look at that. Learning as we go. Very interesting. So the one that I had was actually this one. Yes. And then I had it. Um, AI'd and then I had it chipped and then I sold it and I regretted it ever since. Uh, I thought, and then I installed those focus motor really. <laughs> And then, yeah. <laughs> and then I changed the glass. <laughs> <laughs> and basically now it's a 16mm 2.8G. Yeah. Um, so I, I have gone through quite a few macro lenses in my time. I do like them very much. So after we had the 55mm, they created a 55 f2.8. Did mm -hmm. you bring one of those? Yes. Yes. Well done. I've done my homework. Well, Tatini well, brought it up, but you brought yes. it this far. Okay, so this is the 55 f2.8. This is a lens that... Which channel you can use if you know it? This is one that you can actually still buy. Although it's now, obviously, all the manual focus lenses are discontinued, um, you can still sometimes pick up the occasional one or two brand new. Um, uh, is your thing on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One, two, one, two. Classy. Yeah, okay. I see you perfectly on the right channel, but not on the left channel. It's very low on the left channel. Ah, uh, well. Okay. Does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. So this one is another one that is one to two reproduction. So once again, for those of you who've more recently joined us, one to two reproduction is half life size reproduction. And to get that to one to one, you would have to pop an extension tube on the end. Now, funnily enough, these lenses, although you probably won't be able to see it, but they actually have a distance readout. Can you focus on that for me? Can you focus on that? Like that, kind of. Cover our faces. And then, yeah, wow. there we go. So it's got three sets of numbers. Talking of high production value. <laughs> <laughs> it's got three sets of numbers. Unplug and replug and see what happens. So that potentially may fix it. The bottom one is meters. We're going to just spin up with like a... And the I'm going to have my coffee. Is it better? Okay. Who okay. knows? I just had to be late for 10 minutes and just everything goes down here, isn't it? I should have just done it by myself. Right. 
So the bottom numbers are meters, the, the middle numbers are feet, and then the top is the distance if you put an extension tube on it. So Nikon even thought about that. They had that taken into account. Um, a lot of the older macro lenses, including the beautiful 105 2.5. Oh, I like this one. Yep. Yeah, also has those three sets of numbers. But rather than a PK, we had a thing called a PN11. I've talked about extension tubes in a few live streams. If you go back um, through our live stream archive, you will actually find uh, all the different extension tubes that I talked about and their different lengths. But basically PN11 was a slightly bigger one. It actually has a tripod bush in it so that you could mount this on a tripod. Uh, whereas the PK3 is a 27 and a half millimeter Ooh, extension. Okay. And then you've got the PK2 uh, and the PK1, which then AI turned into PK11, 12 and 13. What about the K set? of extension tubes. That was prior before that. Yeah, right? so okay. K-Set came around uh, and they're not all extension tubes, they're kind of, it's almost, it's, it is an extension tube set, but mm -hmm. it also has other things which are very oh, useful. So you have like a reversing ring, you have a, a little uh, screw thread to bayonet ring. So three in one. It's like five rings. Okay. Five rings. Um, the K-Set was the sort of precursor to extension tubes. So those came about for the Nikon F mount, but there are actually still uses for K-ring sets. So um, if you pick one up, you can pick them up really cheap. Sometimes they sell yeah. for about 10 quid on eBay. Um, they're worth having because they're quite handy. And all those extension um, tubes, they're stackable effectively. Yes. So you can put two or three together. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yeah, this is why live is so much fun, David says. Yeah, it's like really live. <laughs> this week it's more raw and unedited yeah. than ever before. Living on edge. Yeah, exactly. Um, Roy talks about close-up filters. I think we should, we, we're going to talk about the present and future of, um, of macro in a moment, but I'm just doing the sort mm -hmm. of past part. Is... So the 5Ts and 60s, when did they come out? 80s, 70s? So the 6T and the 5T, I don't actually know when they came out, but I know that the 6T is the filter that you need to bring this beautiful 70 to 180 to one-to-one -one reproduction. That's a nice upsell, isn't it? Yes, exactly. So uh, let me just finish with the manual focus lenses. Yes, coming back. Coming back, circling back, everyone's favorite term now. So Since I don't know the structure. <laughs> Anyway, so they did a one, in the pre-AI range, they did 55 and 105 F4. Uh, and then we move on to AI. And mm -hmm. then we had very briefly a 55 3.5 AI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, which I, I loved actually. It was fantastic for reproduction. It was very often used as a sort of archival lens used to scan archives and do, mm -hmm. and do, um, slide copying and negative copying. It was known for its superior optics. In fact, the five centimeter 3.5, the rangefinder lens, according to Pacific Rim Cameras, which was is a, a blog uh, run by someone in the US, they said that the five centimeter 3.5 exceeded the resolving capabilities of film available at the time, mm. back in the 1960s. Uh, I think we're talking about Robert's room, but Pacific Rim? Yeah, the movie? Okay. 1950, sorry. Yeah, I know, Pacific Rim, it made yeah. me think of that as well. Um, and it was the sharpest lens ever made for a rangefinder. So they've kind of taken that ethos and, and moved moved along with it. Yeah, not many people know that they actually did the macro lens for rangefinders. No, exactly. And as I say, we've got one in stock, it's quite rare. Thank you to Adam and Steve and Brian and Richard and Joy for your contributions to the coffee fund. Very much appreciated, very much needed. Oh. Thank you so much for Becky's patience as well. <laughs> People need quite a bit of coffee after I have that. an abundance of patience. Might need some chamomile tea afterwards, to be yeah. honest, after I've had my coffee. I don't know what's going to happen to me when the camera is going to shut down, or when they're <laughs> going to stop live streaming. But uh, at the moment, let's keep going. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't know how patient I'll be then. Um, yes, John, an excellent tip. Let's talk about, we will talk about converters on the 105 macro. Oh, the I only know macro. Thing too about you that. You know about that. Yes. Can, I'm just going to move forward in time <laughs> through the manual focus lenses. Okay, so manual focus lenses. If you want to pick up an absolute bargain, absolute bargain, find yourself a 55mm f3.5 AI or converted. Mm -hmm. Superb lens. I could not fault it. You can put an extension tube on it and then... Have a lot of fun. Um, alternatively, the 55 2.8, as I've mentioned on a couple of streams before, is the lens that they use for all these movies. You see these movie posters behind us? Uh, stop motion animation mm -hmm. um, companies often use this one because 
of its superior optics and because obviously it focuses very closely even without an extension tube. Yeah, we've so sold quite a few. We, we have, exactly. It um, it's, focuses all the way down to just under 25 centimeters, which is very close. Now, onwards from that, we have the 105, which I have here, and they also did a 200 mil F4 macro. They did two different 200 mil F4s. They did the one that I often talk about, which is the small, light, sort of compact mm -hmm. 200 F4. And then they did the very expensive, much more expensive than that, macro lens, mm -hmm. um, which is also not massive. It's about this big. Well, 200 F4, yeah, that's... Yeah, but not the AF one, the, uh, the okay. manual focus one. Okay, yes. Although it's a similar size to the AF one, just mm -hmm. skinnier. Skinnier, yeah. Mm. So, um, so that is a lovely lens, but very, very expensive. If we're talking about what lenses are best for what kind of photography, to be honest, I personally find that shorter macro lenses are way more versatile than the longer ones. So um, 200 for me is just a bit too long. But if you're shooting something like insect, dragonflies, yeah. dragonfly, yeah, something mm -hmm. where you need to be far away, then 200 or the 70 to 180 is great just to... Yeah, you don't want to spook them. Yeah. No, exactly. Although I have shot butterflies and uh, bees and stuff. <laughs> I know, it sounds like I shot them. <laughs> Did you point the gun at them? No, I didn't. And, no, Stay okay. still. Yeah. Um, no, so with the 55 macro, mm. manual focus. Yeah, from my experience, I only used 60. Yeah. And that was my two go lens for all still life photography I ever did. And it's beautiful. Yeah. The studio work, fantastic. Exactly. And if you're ever doing um, sort of stock photography, or if you're planning to do anything like when you do weddings, for example, you need to do the ring shots mm -hmm. and the detail shots. Yep. You can actually get away with getting something like a 55 3.5. It's stunning for the occasional use stuff and they just are so inexpensive. Figgy says, I'm really impressed with the older 55 3.5 on my DF. Yeah, another lovely combination. Yep. Um, so I would say any of those for the, if you're only occasionally doing macro and you're not doing moving subjects, then a 55 3.5 mm -hmm. or 2.8 is like, and Pretty speaking easy. of wedding photography, because you carry quite a lot of kit on you mm -hmm. during the day, yeah. have something like this, it's big and heavy, and it will just add a, quite a bulk to your bag. Yeah. So having something like this, or let's say 60D, yeah. it's very good because small and light, it still gives you a magnification you need for this ring type shots and let's say table setups and things like this. So it's it's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. And Roy says, or oh, reproduction photography, exactly, yeah. if you're doing reproduction. Um, I know quite a lot of um, sort of artists who want, who kind of photography is almost like the secondary hobby mm. to their painting um, or their craft. And so having a macro lens is useful to keep all those lines straight when you're trying to take pictures. That's true. Like I, I recently took a couple of pictures of paintings that I did mm -hmm. and I used my zoom, my 24 to 70 on my Z6. And I was like, <laughs> everything's kind of like, a bit wonky, not mm -hmm. even at 24, just at about 50 mil. And then you put the 60 mil on, okay, you just have to figure out your working distance, mm. but actually everything is nice and straight. So if, what you say is if you're using the right tool for what you want to do, you're going to get good results, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Exactly. John just gets his wife to carry everything, so he's, That's not, true. he's not that worried. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to move along from the AI AIS lenses now to the AF macro. Oh, I know those things. You know the AF macro? Yes. Now, a few of you I know have used the 55 2.8 AF. This was a rare lens, which was very short in production. It um, actually, I don't know how many they made, but I'm going to find out now. So mm -hmm. please bear with me for this interlude. Do, 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 do. Okay, so they made. Is that correct? 40,000. 40,000? No, it can't be because what, they've done 16 of uh, 55, 2.8. No, that was a NASA lens. Ah, uh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. So okay. they did 40,000. They produced it over three years. Very and small production. then they produced the 60 mils. Now, the 60s, in contrast, the 60 mil D, this one, which is still going, mm -hmm. at the time that this was written, 204 plus, actually, 200... Thousand. Thousand actually more than that. So yes, wow. the 40,000 is actually quite a short run. Yeah. You don't realize how many lenses Nikon China. You're like, oh, they probably made about 10 of those. Yeah, limited <laughs> edition, isn't it? Yeah. So the 55 macro, I've seen quite a few of you use use them and actually put images in our drive folder of the 55 AF 2.8 macro. It was within three years replaced out by the 60 mil. Now the 60 mil F 2.8 um, they did the non-D and the D. Mm -hmm. Slightly weirdly, the non-D is about 15 grams heavier than the D. I don't know why. 
That's straight. Don't ask me okay. why. But this is a one-to-one -one reproduction lens. Yeah, I so really like this one. No extension tubes needed. Um, the, the beauty of these, if you can pick them up now, is it is the lens that works with the ES1 and the ES2 mm -hmm. for your slide copying. And all the PK extension tubes mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah, because it's got the aperture ring. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to unlock that and use that with your older cameras or with the PK extension tubes, then you can. I've mentioned a few times with this one, um, the problem with Nikon extension tubes is they don't have electronic contacts. Mm -hmm. But as a lot of you will know, because we've talked about it before, the Kenko, thank you for that, very helpful. The Kenko extension tube set has electronic contacts and that will allow you to autofocus, to meter automatically, um, and they are incredibly useful. So I would say if you have like one little non-Nikon item in your kit bag, then a set of Kenko extension tubes would be great. Yeah, the good thing about extension tubes, they don't have any optical elements inside them, yeah. so they effectively work as a spacer mm -hmm. that pass all the electronic information. Therefore, they don't need to be made by Nikon. Exactly. Kenko does the job, the image quality stays the same. Exactly, and at this stage, I don't really see, like even if Nikon produced their own set of electronic extension tubes, I don't know that the price would necessarily justify it because they don't do anything that the Kenko ones don't do. Yeah, and they probably would be for Z-series anyway. Yeah, exactly. So now speaking of Z-series, mm -hmm. there is also a Kenko Z-series of extension tubes. I've tested them, we've done a video which should be out in the next couple of weeks, and I've also done an article for Nikon Owner which should be out in the next yeah. issue. So And they work with all Z lenses. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so one of the caveats of using extension tubes, uh, which I think I mentioned before, is you can't have a lens shorter than the extension. So if you're using a 30, just making up hypothetical numbers, if you're using a 35 millimeter extension tube, you can't use a 24 mil lens. Oh, okay. So, so there are going to be some issues. However, all of the Z lenses, like the, the extension tubes that come in that set are a 10 mil and a 16 mil. Okay. So you could use either of those with pretty much any Z lens. Uh, the only other issue with extension tubes, I would say, is that telephoto lenses, they don't really make any difference. Mm. So it's the sort of mid to mid end that so were you what you mean is the focusing distance doesn't change much or well the closest focusing distance, the closest focusing distance changes only a little and then your subject doesn't really come much closer if you okay see. i mean it doesn't okay. sort of increase the reproduction ratio mm -hmm. um norm says the kenko tubes are among the only non-nikon items that i use with my nikon cameras also outstanding is the Tamron 90mm macro lens. Mm. That's one I've heard about a lot, but never actually used. Mm -hmm. So that would be interesting. And the good news about extension tubes from Kenko, they're fairly inexpensive. So yeah. the whole set is about 150 odd pounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, worth the investment. In fact, we just got another batch in from, from the people that we order from. So if you are ever wanting to experiment with a bit of F-mount Nikon photography, um, you don't even have to call us. You can buy them on our website now. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and Nick says, my Kenko tubes arrived a few weeks ago. Thank you. There you go. So Nick's tried them. <laughs> um, so John says, can you use it a Z extension tube, then an FTZ, then an F lens? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. I have, because the extension tube puts distance between the body and the, and the back of the lens. If you then add the FTZ, no, I don't believe it does. I actually don't think I've tried it, but anyway. Uh, Lee asks, what makes a macro lens? So it's macro photography is known as close-up photography. This is true. Mm -hmm. The term micro, which Nikon use, refers mm -hmm. very speci uh, specifically, specifically? Mm -hmm, to the reproduction of one-to-one -one or one -to -one. life size. And we micro stands for microscope, effectively. Yeah. That's what the dedication used because at the time, only half the size of reproduction lenses were available mm -hmm. and they were called macro. So when they released one-to-one, -one, they decided we're going to call it micro so to differentiate one-to-one -one lens to half-size uh, lens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like a couple of people are pointing out, yeah, so if you put a larger extension tube than the, uh, than the focal length of the lens, so like let's say you put a 75mm extension on a 50mm lens, the focusing distance is inside the lens. It's too close, so you can't focus. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, my brain melts right now. Oh, okay. When you, I'm trying to do all the math, and it just, no, it's not working. <laughs> but yeah, micro one-to-one, -one, so life-size reproduction. Macro is just the general subject of close-up photography, mm -hmm. um, but, but they often get used interchangeably. 
Uh, Tom says the extension tube would work with the FTZ. Principle is the same. I've never thought to try it that way around because it just doesn't yeah, make sense well, to me. If you think about it, yeah, what FTZ does, it just basically makes distance from the you know sensor to the lens the same as on DSLRs. Yes, I know, but then if you're adding an extension to that. So it just works as a lens with extension tube on DSLR okay. without FTZ adapter. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I think this is well, something we should experiment with. Yeah. So let's give it Do a video. Yeah, one day. Okay. Not now. Uh, I'll add an addendum to my extension tube. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great question, whoever asked that. Yeah, not after live stream. After live stream, I'm getting murdered. <laughs> after live yeah. stream, we're going to have words. And uh, then our premiere is going to air. It's very exciting. So, now, uh, yes, do you can set yourself a reminder for our premiere. For those of you that haven't yet, uh, it is on our channel. It's ready to go. I'm going to show you a little preview of it uh, momentarily, which will be very exciting. You get your popcorn ready. Yes, exactly. I don't know how a bellows would work with an extension tube, with a, with a Z extension tube, Roy. I can use bellows units with the Zs, with an FTZ adapter, but why would I then use an extension tube with that? Because the bellows is already exactly. doing the job of the extension tube. True. So that doesn't make sense to me, but maybe, maybe it can, I don't know. Um, bellows units are a whole kind of subject in themselves, and funnily enough, I think I've talked about them so much that we've sold out of Bellows units. <laughs> Literally, there is no more. I didn't even need to world. do a live stream on them. Just people were like, yeah, I'm going to give that a go because mm. it's a relatively inexpensive way to do extreme close up photography with something as simple as a 50 mil mm. lens. Um, so, another thing that you can do rather than buying an, a, a macro lens mm -hmm. is you can reverse a lens. So, Use using a reverse ring. Yeah, okay. a reversing ring. So, if you've got a 52 mil di diameter lens, then it's a BR 2A mm -hmm. now. Um, and what essentially that does is it means that you're using the rear element to focus on it, inverts the, um, the optical formula of the lens essentially, and allows you to focus much closer to a subject. Mm -hmm. The wider the lens, again, the sort of shorter the focusing distance. So you can't really do that it very easily with a wide angle lens, like a 24 mil. I think the, the focusing distance is a millimeter or something. Ah, okay. Um, but you can, but something like a 50 mil is perfect for that. Even a 35 mil you could get away with pretty close. The problem with using reversing rings, of course, is that there's zero electronic contact. So you're manually controlling your aperture mm -hmm. and you, you don't focus, you move backwards and forwards to the subject. Um, if you don't have a lens with an aperture ring, then you basically can't really use it. And that's the problem with bellows as well, is that you need to have an aperture ring because yep. there's no other way to control it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, Icon sees Mr. No says, I almost prefer reverse lens rings, keeps your outfit more compact. It's true, they are very slim and tidy. There aren't, Nikon only made two from what I remember, a 52 and a 62, mm -hmm. but I am sure that there are sort of inexpensive because it's just a machined piece of metal. So I'm pretty sure that there are non-Nikon ones out there in the world. And again, no electronics, so nothing to mess up your camera or anything like that. Um, Jane says, I think it's because it's lighter and smaller. What was that in reference to? Maybe I missed the earlier comment. Oh, a friend of mine works as a medical photographer in Birmingham Hospital, says there is always a rush between fellow workers to get their hands on the 105 2.8D mm -hmm. over the VR 2.8. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay. I know so, that's a lot of dentists are buying 60 mils. Yes. Yeah. Although, to be honest, more of the sort of the newer dental students and graduates, because I've dealt with quite a lot of them recently, mm -hmm. have been buying a modern setup with okay. SBR one C ones with an eighty five three point five or a one oh five two point eight G. Okay. Um, so and that brings me to the modern, more modern lenses. So we had the sixty mil D, we had the one oh five two point eight non D and D, and then not yeah. not, 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 not yet. Not, not there yet. Um, we had the 70 to 180, which we've talked about before, limited production on this lens as well. One to two reproduction, it needed a special filter to bring it to one to one. The only zoom macro mm -hmm. that Nikon made. And then we had the 200 f4 D micro, which was discontinued about last eight, year or two eight, years ago. Yeah, no, I don't think it was a eight month, yeah, yeah, something about a year and a half ago. So, um, that which is very sad, but mm -hmm. you know, it's the D lenses are slowly but surely being sort of moved along and we're seeing more and more Gs. Then we have the 60 mil G, which we don't have here. Don't mm -hmm. know why. We're out of stock, that's one. Don't we have a demo though? We have a demo. 
Never mind. We may have. It's fine. Maybe still downstairs waiting for us. It is. And then we have the 105. No, it's fine. Then we have the 105 2.8G. Now, I would argue that the 60 mil 2.8G is probably the most versatile macro lens, but this one, as someone mentioned earlier, takes teleconverters. So you don't necessarily need to have a 200 mil because you can just pop one of the converters, the 1.4, the 1.7, or the two times on there. Obviously, you lose a bit of aperture, but that is a very versatile setup. Mm -hmm. What would you, I mean, would you use this as a portrait lens as well? Um, no. No? I would say if you have to buy only one 105, mm. then definitely get a macro if you into macro photography, but dedicated portrait lens would do a better job for portraiture. I don't like bokeh rendering on this lens personally. Oh. I think something like 85 or 105, 140 will do better. Interesting. But it doesn't mean you can't use it. No. That's the thing. No, no, indeed. In fact, Baxter says the 105 is a little soft. The AFD is much sharper mm. than the VR. That's interesting. I haven't noticed that, but that is very interesting. Roy says reversing rings are a great way for scratching your rear element. <laughs> if you're not careful, I'm sure. I should try that. Thank you to Brian and to Peter. Massive thank you for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Um, Steve says reverse a wide angle onto a telephoto lens to get really close and keep your auto functions. That made my brain hurt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, John uses the Z7 II with the FTZ and the 105 macro. I have to say, I had I, I used the 105 a little bit, mm -hmm. but personally, I prefer the 60mm. For me, it's a more kind of a go anywhere lens. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's smaller, apart mm -hmm. from anything. No, mm -hmm. it doesn't have VR, but once you put on extension tubes, you get super duper close mm -hmm. with the Kenko extension tubes. Mm -hmm. I mean, even closer than the uh, Six, 18 centimeters. Wow, that's close. Yeah, exactly. So it's 18 centimeters just natively. But also, I find myself using it for, if need be, portraiture and product photography. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for your hand gestures. Very encouraging. <laughs> I half approve of You half approve message, of that. Yeah. I think that the 60 mil is very versatile. Oh, 60 is fantastic. And I actually prefer 60 millimeter focal distance over 50 millimeter focal distance. Yeah. So if, if I would have to choose between the two, mm. I would go 58, but let's say 60 as well. Yeah. Now, Norm says, can we discuss the importance of a flat field macro lens compared to a conventional lens of similar focal length? I mean, essentially, because we have a very diverse level of knowledge in our audience here, I don't want to kill anyone off, but essentially macro lenses are better because you don't get edge to edge distortion. They tend to be very sharp edge to edge because of the closest focusing distance. Yes, arguably you could use, mm -hmm. you could use your 70 to 200 instead of a 105 and do some close up photography, mm -hmm. you know, get super close, but it's not going to give you the same quality close up as a native macro lens would. I just heard flat feet and that's all I heard cool. from that message. Excellent. Um, there are medical specific Nikkor lenses. Now Nikon have been, they have their own branch of scientific purpose glass and machinery mm -hmm. and equipment. Um, Nikon glass gets used in optician equipment for checking people's eye health and things like that. But separately for the sort of, I wouldn't say mass market, but more generally available, they did a couple of close-up lenses which had a ring light the medical nico uv yeah. that's right okay. they had no they had that's a uv that's is a, a separate one. one and then they had 120 f4 yeah. yeah so they had the uh the 200 medical nickel the 120 medical nickel and then they had the 105 uv which is a mm -hmm. different lens um so those were designed for sort of use in surgeries and uh so that when you need very close up work, but you also need the light to be in the lens. It had a circle of light in it. They came with their own set of filters. Um, to be honest, finding all the different parts for them is part of the challenge. You also, in order to power the, the ring light in the lens, you had to have a big battery pack. Uh, and even the little cables for those, which used to get worn yeah. out, are quite hard to get hold of. They would come together. And I yeah. think we had people call us and say, Do you, can you sell the battery pack separately? And yeah. say, well, no, we can't. No, exactly, because then we'd end up with a lens which didn't have a battery pack, yeah. so that wouldn't really work. Um, Paul says, my spectacles have Nikon lenses. Oh, fancy. That's cool. I'd like my spectacles to have Nikon glass in them. Um, but yeah, so Nikon, obviously being an optics company, they did have all these specialist things. And these are, we're talking about more sort of consumer, consumables, not consumables, consumer macro lenses. Um, yeah. 
No macro lenses were harmed yeah. in the making of this one. It tastes like metal. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Um, but I would say if you're just getting started with macro or you don't really know if you want a macro lens, mm -hmm. you don't need to invest, like you don't need to jump in and spend £750 on a 105. You could just start with a set of extension tubes at about £150 for three, and then you can turn many of your lenses into macro lenses. Um, alternatively, as someone mentioned earlier, you've got close-up filters. I'm not so keen on close-up mm. filters myself. Mm -hmm. No, me too. I, you know, I prefer extension tubes. Yeah, because because of the fact that you're putting a piece of glass, potentially a non-Nikon glass, in front of your Nikon glass, and that that's what leads to sort of image quality loss and mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, quick question. So, but if you would have to buy a, only one macro lens, mm -hmm. yeah, which one would you recommend? The 60. 60 is the one, yeah? <laughs> that's the one I have. Or if you're on DX system, get 40. Yes, so yeah. that's a good point. So on the DX lenses, there's two options there. You've got the 40 f2.8, which is basically like a 60, and then you've got an 85 f3.5 mm -hmm. VR, which is essentially, but not quite, supposed to replicate the 105. Um, that was one of the lenses that we saw was recently discontinued, wasn't yes, it? In Nikon yes. Japan. Very strange, isn't it? It's really bizarre. I don't yeah. understand why. Um, but if you are a DX user, I would still recommend the 60 if you've got the budget for it. Because if you do ever end up with a full frame camera, then you can use it. And it doubles up as a portrait focal distance. So it goes Even up to more. 90 mil. Yeah. Look at that. We've got 66 likes and 208 viewers. Please do give us a thumbs up. We'd love it if you would. Thank you so much to Carmine for your contribution to the Thank coffee you. fund uh, and your love from New York City. Big love back to you uh, from London. And YC. From Blighty. <laughs> East Coast. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love New York. I know. I really want to go to New York one day. I will when all this nonsense is over. Let's. Uh, I need to have breakfast at Tiffany's and all that. You mm. know. So, Tiffany will come yeah. with me. I'm a Williamsburg person. You see. <laughs> Watch out, New York. <laughs> yeah, I like to have my brunch in there. Yeah. Or go to Brooklyn Brewery. Why not? Uh, it's not Brooklyn Brewery. It's a gr Grey Goose. No, <laughs> that's a what? <laughs> Why are you asking me? I don't know. <laughs> Something Goose Brewery. I was there. Goose Brewery. Nice. Goose Brewery. <laughs> Yeah. He's just saying random words now. Um, so... <laughs> Actually, not Williams or Greenpoint. That's where it's at. Cool. So we're going to move on from New York, but we love you, New York, as well. So thank you. Um, Ed says, I used close-up filters on a 24-120 several years ago. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... I mean, I've done some experiments with the Nikon ones, particularly the cheaper Nikon ones. They were mm -hmm. all 52 mil diameter. You do get more chromatic aberration with mm -hmm. them. Um, because it is essentially like putting spectacle glass on the front of your lens, your normal lens. So um, I would say if you can stretch to it and you're a DX user, go for a 40 mil or a 60. Yeah. Um, and that's probably the most versatile of the macro lens. It has many purposes. Yeah, with filters, reduction in image quality quite significant compared, let's say, to extension tubes. Yes, exactly. Michael says I should stay in the Waldorf. <laughs> yeah, I will, <laughs> darling. Um, so... Now yes. we've talked about past. Okay, we've let's talked talk about, about the future. Yes. Well, we've talked about present. Yeah, let's get yeah, there. Let's uh, get there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that you had like a long segment. You know. I did. I had it all. Oh, you see, I've missed everything. I know, That's where it is. Okay. So future of macro lenses. We've talked about this a little bit. Yes. On the podcast. Pretty much every week. Yeah. We want a macro lens, Nikon. If you're listening. It's about time. <laughs> I think of the four lenses that we're supposed to be seeing over the course of the next however long. How long is it? A couple of weeks, months? It's been years for me. No, but like there is there is an itinerary for the release of the next four yes. Z lenses. And we believe that one of those is going to be a macro lens. Yeah, according to Nikon Rumors, it's very soon. Mm, very soon. Nothing I would say vague. very soon could be between now and Christmas. Tokyo Olympics. No, I would say Tokyo Olympics because... <laughs> We're definitely going to see some lenses announcements, and those are going to be long lenses. But if they say we're going to release four, yeah. it can't be all four long lenses. No. It's probably going to be one um, zoom and uh, one macro lens. Yes, exactly. And we're hoping it's going to be the 50 f2.8, I think we're going to guess it is. They haven't said what it is. I would hope for one or five personally, I know. but from price point of view, 50 would be better. I, I want a 105Z very much mm -hmm. um, because I'm quite happy to use my 60 mm -hmm. with the FTZ adapter, but 
I have a feeling to kind of keep a few people happy, it might be the 50. Okay, so how many 50 millimeter lenses would you like to have in your collection? Of the Z lenses, well, we've got the 51.8, the 51.2, the 58, 0.95, why mm -hmm. not? Let's just chuck that one in yeah. there. And then a 51 macro. Oh, it's not too bad. You gotta catch them all, isn't it? <laughs> Got to, got to catch them all. Uh, <laughs> so as uh, Woody points out, out, the only way to find a new 6T, uh, the only way to find a new 6T, no. I think what he means, as we mentioned, is the only way to get one-to-one -one on this lens is for a 6T filter to be put on the front of it. Okay. The 6T tends to be about 200, two to 300, sometimes even 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much they sell. Which one is better, 5T or 6T, from your experience? Uh, the 6T, I believe, if I were, it's a gr bigger magnification mm -hmm. than the 5T. Okay. But I have actually never used a 5T. Okay. I've used the 6T on this lens. I've used the 2T and the 3T, which mm -hmm. are the old ones. And then they have even older ones, which were called like close up 0, 1, and 2, mm -hmm. which were kind of Nikon F era. Okay. Um, I would say, yeah, see, Ed says the 55 F2 AIS is my go-to. Yeah, I mean, if you can pick one up inexpensively, these are beautiful lenses. The 60, I think this kind of mid-range focal length makes yeah. the most sense. In the meantime, while we are waiting, not so patiently, for a macro Z lens to turn up, mm -hmm. um, I've been doing experimenting, as I mentioned, with the Z extension tubes. So the thing that I messaged you to ask you to bring up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, um, the 10 millimeter, just imagine, pretend it's there. They're and still next to your desk. It's still next to the other million, I um, I'm going to find the thing. Hang on. The Can good we... thing, they work really well. It's actually, they don't slow down autofocus as much. No. So that's really good. Uh, I mean, they. it depends on what lens you're using them on, but I have found that actually they work pretty well. Yo. Um, And I have no qualms about manual focusing because when it's macro work let me just show you if i can there we go so this is what they look like mm -hmm. so you get a 10 mil and a 16 mil now with the f mount set you actually get three extension tubes i'm trying to remember i believe it's 12 26 and 36 mm -hmm. something like that or 12 24 and 36 mm -hmm. so that's possibly an even better value set if you're using F mount lenses. But for Zs, most of the lenses work with these. Now, as you can see, it tells you, it's got the instructions. Oh, if like you that. use the 10 mil, then your lens has to be more than 10 mil. Okay. If you use the 16, your lens has to be more than 16 millimeter. Okay. And Well, that's quite self-explanatory, isn't yeah, it? It is. I will also point out, though, because you might find this interesting, if you've got a Z50 with a 16 to 50, mm -hmm. the double extension tube set works because the 16... Times 1.5. Yeah, exactly. It's a, a 24. 20, 24. So... Simple math. But I have found that despite that being 24, okay. the double extension tube set does work. Okay. Amazingly, it's not very good on that little lens, to be honest, because you don't get really any focus. It kind of just goes. Eh. But <laughs> it's term. usable if you have to. Yeah, isn't it? So, exactly. But okay. I, my preference was to use the sixteen to fifty DX lens with the sixteen mil extension. Mm -hmm. um, that worked really nicely. Mm -hmm. A couple of I put at least I think one shot on my Instagram uh, with that set, and then with the beauty of the twenty four to seventy mm -hmm. is that those two extension tubes are incredibly useful for your standard kit lens. It works with the 51.8, the 35 1.8, the 51.2. I did a few experiments with the 1.2. Of course you did. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't have any other Z lenses to try it on, but, but I did think to myself, well, actually, although we are waiting for a macro lens, mm -hmm. this is a really nice way to do it. Yes. And then it doesn't add much bulk to your kit. In anticipation? For yeah. the release, you That's can right. use extension tubes. Exactly, instead. I mean, the good news is, again, if you've got FTZ adapts, you can put one of those and continue using them. Mm -hmm. But if you're a new kind of new person, new person? New person you're to, in, into the Z system? That's right. That's right. New user, thank you. Is that what Coffee's it? not strong enough. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you're a new Z person, user, then uh, you might not already have a Nikon F mount macro lens and fair enough, fair dues to you if you don't. And then the extension tubes are a great inexpensive solution. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few people commenting on other 
other brands and things like that. Now, unfortunately, the 50 mils are not compatible with it with uh, with teleconverters. None yes. of the 50 mils. So Nikon's teleconverters only work with lenses that start with a focal length beyond 105. Mm -hmm. Except for the 70 to 200. Except so basically, the if the lens yes. goes beyond 105, then the teleconverter seems to work. If the lens is also has an AFS motor and a fixed aperture, those are the other key things. There's only one exception to that rule, um, which is the 80 to 400 variable aperture. That's true. But That's all the true. others need to have a fixed aperture, AFS, and go beyond 105 in order to, to work. Yeah, and it's generally physically impossible to mount the teleconverter on that lens because yeah. the rear element is so close that they will just touch and scratch each other. Exactly, so don't even want to try it. But but yeah, otherwise a 50 mil with a with a converter would be great. I'd love it if they did converters for short shorter lenses. But, but that's not really for macro use, is it? No, I don't think, I mean, portraiture, yeah, I don't think you oh, can I know that stuff. Yeah. Port you do, portraiture, I know you know more than me. Yeah. Um, I'm, or at least, you know, I can, I can have one win. Yay! <laughs> I'm trying to keep on. There's a whole like conversation going on that I'm not able to keep track of. But Peter says I don't have a macro lens at present, but want one specifically for copying slides and negatives. Mm -hmm. I'm using the Z6, so would I be better to wait for the Z lens or get the 60 mil? This is a good question, both yeah. Peter. Excellent question. At the moment, we don't have any guarantee that the Z macro lens, the 50, presumably, will happen very soon. Well, no, we don't have any confirmation that it will work with the ES2, mm -hmm. is, is my thought. Okay. It, I would assume they would do that, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense, isn't it? It would be yeah. illogical if they didn't make it work. Mm -hmm. But I will say, if you've got the Z6 and you've got a standard um, 50, 1.8, and you use the Z extension tubes, you should get close enough to use the slide copying adapter it, within a few millimeters. But would the image would be sharp? So you, yeah. would you just need to crop a little bit? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, you would need okay. to crop, exactly. Okay. So it might look like the instead of filling the frame, the slide might be a bit further away. Oh, okay. But you should be able to bring your focal length close enough in order to do that. We've now tested extension tubes with the 35DX, the 51.8G, the um, 28 to 105, 24 120, all of those lenses at some point, the old 24 and 20, by the way, not the current one. Um, all of those lenses have been able to focus close enough to use the ES2 with an extension tube. So although the 60 mil is, is Nikon's solution, as Roy points out, the D lenses don't autofocus on Z cameras. This is mm -hmm. very true. Um, but also, if you don't want to spend money on a lens just specifically for slide copying, you can use an extension tube. So 60 allows for basically full image covering the whole sensor. Yeah. Uh, all other solutions, you would need to crop the image. So you'll get a black, black frame around your slide negative. So you just need to crop it in the post. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have a 105 macro for my D5 and D850. I'm eagerly awaiting the Z105 for my Z72. Mm -hmm. You can never have too many 105s, Jim. Never. Yeah, 10514 um, is very good. That's right. Roy points out there are thir third party um, teleconverters. There are. Most of them, again, don't work with the wide angle side of Nikon lenses, but Kenko, their Teleplus converters, mm -hmm. they do seem to work with the majority of Nikon lenses. So if you're desperate to not have another lens in the set or you want a, 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 a teleconverter, then have a look at the Kenko Teleplus range. We don't stock them, but mm -hmm. they might be of interest. The, the main caveat with those is that you might not get autofocus. True. Mm. Because like, for example, a lot of people wanted a teleconverter for the 70 to 300. Okay, yes. You know, and, it, and Nikon don't make one for that. Mm -hmm. But the te Kenko Teleplus works, but the it says on the long list of compatibility and stuff like that, it says don't Blame us if the autofocus doesn't mm. work. <laughs> but from another point of view, you know the H200 2.D, 2.8D N lens. Yeah. Nikon doesn't have autofocus teleconverter for it, no, but true. Kenko has. Yeah, that's And true. it works. That's random. Yeah. Yeah. So teleconverters are a good way around things. Um, Giovanni says Z62470 f4. Which tube length for one to one? What about quality compared to a macro native? I mean. Yeah, it's not the 24 to 70 f4 is not going to be as good as a native macro lens. You're not going to get, as Norm was mentioning, that flat field of view. Yeah. You are going to get a sort of curved field, which is not ideal for things like reproduction. Um, it's fine for insect and 
flower yeah. photography. And they're so not like designed that. for this type of work. Macro lenses are designed specifically for close-up work, yeah. and that's why maybe they're not as good at affinity, but they will be very good at close-up. Exactly, but you won't get one-to-one -one with a, with an extension tube. Um, but Even if you stack all of them together. The twenty, As far as I know, and you know what? I spent hours trying to work out how to work that out, but there were just too many variables, unfortunately. We need to me. create a spreadsheet or something. No? The, even then, that doesn't help. You know, um, Cambridge in Colour, which have a whole photographic dictionary, and they have all these like calculators and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. In order to calculate whether something would give you one-to-one -one with an extension tube, you needed to know the magnification ratio which Nikon don't list for most of their lenses. Yeah, so I can't answer that question. And that's why I do portrait photography. <laughs> I think most of the audience have fallen asleep now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great question, Giovanni. The, both extension tubes will work with that lens. You won't get one-to-one -one reproduction, but you will get very, very close. That's, mm -hmm. that's all I can say. Um, if I got an, into any more in-depth with that, I think I'd give everyone a headache. Well, closer than without extension tubes, yeah, isn't exactly. it? So that's already a good start. Yeah, exactly. Um, Giovanni says, for negatives, I have an acceptable quality vintage Zeiss Jenner. Don't know that one. 35 f2.8. Very, very old Ooh. tubes. So yeah, there are some older uh, lenses which can be used for reproduction and copying and things like that. Roy, mm -hmm. Roy hates his teleconverters. Hates them. I don't like teleconverters either. <laughs> I don't use them. I just stick with a 500 PF and if it's too too long than or too short then i just have to live with it well you can't uncrop it can you no you can't at least like, there's nothing <laughs> you can do about it um really this this is what it is yeah. by the way 500 pf is not discontinued stocks are coming in slowly yes. yeah yeah it's true um so a zangana says why is there an obsession with one-to-one -one ratio when they're now up to five to one ratios available really good question it's always been the just the rule of thumb for micro photography, that is the definition of the word. So one-to-one -one gets kind of bandied around. You can do close-up photography with any lens. So basically it starts from one-to-one, -one, that's what we call it macro, and then yeah. obviously if you've got high magnification, that's already macro. Then yeah. that's fantastic and bully for you. Um, but yes, you're right, David, too much maths makes it too complicated. It takes all the joy out of out of just taking pictures. Of I agree. It's like retouching after a portrait shoot. Spend three, four hours retouching the skin. You see, it's it just kills all the creativity. Yeah. The same here. That's right. I'm That's not right. good at math. No, That's I, all it is. not my strongest suit. Um, Andy says uh, that he has the 70 to 200 f4 and tried it with the PN11, but the lens defaults to f22. That's right, because the 70 to 200 f4 doesn't have an aperture ring. So the PN11, all of those Nikon extension tubes, they have no electronic contacts. So in order to fully use a lens with them, you would need a lens with an aperture ring. If you put that PN11 on a lens with an aperture ring, you'll be able to change your aperture. You can just, yeah, change it on the lens like yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's hence that. Uh, Roy says, macro lens is the best on extension tubes, but we don't have to use a micro lens if we don't have one. Yes, yeah, precisely. You can use any lens. and. I have found with the Z extension tubes that I'm doing more and more close-up work with the Z mm -hmm. than I was with using the 60 on the yeah. FTZ. I think that's just psychological. <laughs> I think what we're trying to say is with macro photography, you can just start with anything, yeah. but then you can take it on the next level and next level and next level. So you can go really, really deep and yeah, do the math and calculate what the reproduction ratio is going to be, etc. But you can just get extension tube and start working with your normal lens, exactly. which you already have. Exactly, just play with it and see see how it goes. Terry switches to the DX mode on the D750 when using the 200 500, because then it gives you the illusion of being closer. It's yeah. actually just a crop factor, but you know, why it's not? It's like having a built-in teleconverter, isn't uh, it? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Rob points out very, Accurate pointing out here to avoid blur, turn off the VR when using the 105 2.8G on a tripod. Yes. Yes, this is one of those old lenses that doesn't have uh, like a tripod mode where you can basically turn off, you just have to turn it on or off essentially. Now, the reason for that is because VR does this inside the lens. So if your lens is completely stable, then inside the lens is going like this when you're on a stable surface, and then you'll end up with a slightly blurry yeah. picture. Again, that's uh, the case with all VR lenses. Exactly, and then if you have long lenses and you shoot in sports and wildlife, as soon as you go to faster than 500 of a second charge speed, turn the VR off because sometimes you may get the ghosting. Hmm. There you go. Robbie's put an interesting uh, tip there for Andy, but I'm not even going to confirm or deny whether that's accurate. That's very interesting though about removing the lens and setting the aperture and then putting the lens on. 
Oh, I see. Okay. Right, okay, your own risk. Interesting. Um, use an FX micro nickel lens and extension tubes on DX camera for greater magnification on a budget. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're basically just cropping in camera, but it does give you that illusion of being closer. So mm -hmm. why not? Um, a Zangana says, key thing when using tubes, etc., is you need lots and lots of light. Yes, because you are putting distance between the back of the lens and the camera. So you do need a lot of light to come in there. Um, that's the same with teleconverters because, again, you're putting distance. It actually drops the aperture down. That is one caveat with the extension tubes, is that they don't tell the camera that you're losing aperture. Mm, true. Uh, one final thing I'll say before we wrap up and pick our winner um, is that... What was the thing I wanted to say? <laughs> and since Very we, important. Yeah. And since we finish each other's sentences. <laughs> Can you finish my <laughs> sentence for me? Um, oh my gosh, I've just gone completely blank because I started reading a comment. Anyway, it was very important. I'll tell you next time. Like and subscribe in the meantime. Yeah, I will show the premiere. I will show the, actually, I don't know how to do that while I'm doing this at the same time. It's too much for me. I will work it out. We are going to have a premiere of our new upcoming video, uh, which I hope you've all reminded yourself to, uh, to... Oh, there we go. I remembered what I was going to say now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. For those of you that don't know who haven't used macro lenses before, there is a thing when you put your macro lens on your camera and it doesn't show you, for example, in this case, it doesn't show you f2.8. It shows you f5.6 or 3.5, or something like that. That's a very good point. And you go, oh no, my macro lens is broken. Mm -hmm. Like, think of... We have this call at least twice a month. Yeah, exactly. So it's not something wrong with your lens. If you are getting a macro lens for the first time, a macro lens cannot open up all the way when you're shooting at the closest focusing distance. It's physically impossible because there's not enough light traveling into the lens. So these G lenses actually tell you the aperture that you're getting. They tell you, okay, actually what you're really getting at this distance is f3.5 or 5.6. And the further away your subject is, suddenly the more light's getting into the lens, then you'll be able to stop down to f2.8. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe that that was so hard for me to remember. Ugh, anyway, can you do some... Yeah, but your depth of field also is so shallow Yes. that it's just unachievable at um, apertures at 2.8. Exactly, the code yeah. is 48. <laughs> We're just doing some secret code sharing. I'm not involved in all this. No. I feel like I'm left out. You are. I will be next week. <laughs> okay, so the surprise gift for anyone who was wondering, uh, because I know a few of you were wondering, is this very limited edition Nikon camera wrap. It will take a camera and a lens. The reason it's limited edition and that they are supposed to be destroyed uh, at all costs is because they have a camera that was never released by Nikon on them. Do you know what that is? Is it the one of those uh, Nikon, um, the Coolpix ones? Is no? the DL. DL, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. exactly. I've got one of these and I, I, I love it because it's like, oh, look, surprise Nikon camera. The two cameras, yeah, the, yeah. these contain two DL cameras. That's right. Okay, I don't know if there's music, but we're going to pick our winner. Oh, I like it. Don't know if you can hear that, but we're having oh, a great time here. South American. Very many congratulations to Philip. Yay. Yay. Okay. So, Philip, drop us an email to media. Yes. Okay. That media at grazerwestminster.co.uk. We will get your camera wrap sent out to you promptly, hopefully. And uh, thank you very much, everyone who entered. Congratulations. Um, did I miss anyone's coffee fund contributions? No, I think I got everyone. So thank you to everyone who's contributed to the coffee fund. Thank you very um, much. Barrett says, no, Pret is not better and it is not closer. <laughs> so there. Um, no, the nearest Pret is actually really far away now because they all closed in this vicinity thanks to a little thing called COVID. Right, I'm going to try and show you the premiere. How do I do that? Oh, I can do that. Okay, so we have a video which will be available in nine minutes. Uh, let me just see if I can. Okay, here it is. It doesn't, just set yourself a little reminder. It's going live in nine minutes and then you can watch it. It's three minutes long, but it just gives you that little momentary 
first look at a new video for us. We're very excited. We've never done a premiere before, so that's why we're just like really pushing it. So we've got back-to-back -back scheduling. Grace Westminster filling your Friday afternoon. Shall we do like a pay-per-view pay next time? <laughs> I don't know if people will pay for that, but anyway. Thank you very much for bearing with us this afternoon, for um, bearing with Constantine for being late, for me for forgetting what I was saying halfway through my sentences, um, and generally all the randomness that was today's live stream. We massively appreciate you joining us, and we will see you next week for another live stream. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye.